Hello, I am Balagangadhar Reddy. In this session, we will discuss India Relief Features Part 2. In this part, now let us learn about another important relief feature that is Indo-Gangetic Plain. Plain means flat and level land. The interaction of Himalayan rivers, Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra and their tributaries resulted in the formation of great northern plains. 20 million years ago, it was a shallow basin that was gradually filled with alluvial soil that rivers brought from Himalayas. Indo-Gangetic plains broadly consist of three divisions. They are the western part, the central part, the eastern part. Let us learn more about each of these parts. The western part was formed by the Indus and its tributaries, the Jhelum, the Chinab, the Ravi, the Bias and the Sutlej flowing from the Himalayas. Most of the Indus river basin is located in Pakistan, leaving minor portion of Punjab and Ariana in India. Doab features dominate in this region. Doab means a fertile land between two rivers. Punjab name comes from two words. Panch Ab. Panch means five. Ab means river. Punjab means a place of five rivers. The central part is known as the Ganga Plain. It extends from river Gagar to river Tista. This plain formed by Ganga, Yamuna and their tributaries like Son, Kosi etc. The central part of Indo-Gangetic plain spread in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, West Bengal and part of Ariana states. The eastern part of the plain exists mostly in Brahmaputra Valley of Assam. River Brahmaputra is mainly responsible for its formation. Himalayan rivers while flowing down they deposit gravel and pebble sediments in narrow belt of 8 to 16 kilometers of width found parallel to foot hills of Shivaliks. Gravel and pebble sediments belt is known as Bhabar. Bhabar is porous in nature. Small rivers and streams flow underground through Babar and reappear in lower areas forming a swampy and marshy region which is called Terai. This region had thick forest and rich variety of wildlife. Due to migration at the time of India's partition, most of the Terai zone has now been cleared and used for agricultural operations. Fine alluvial plains are found in the south of the Terai region. Old alluvial plains are called Khadar. New alluvial plains are called Bangar. Now let us discuss the relief feature Peninsular Plateau. A plateau is a landform characterized by a flat topped region that is elevated above the surrounding lands. Indian Plateau is also known as Peninsular Plateau since it is surrounded by seas on three sides. The Peninsular Plateau is one of the most ancient land blocks on the earth's surface. It is mainly composed of old crystalline, hard igneous and metamorphic rocks. Metallic and non-metallic mineral resources are also found in this plateau. Topography of plateau is slightly tilted towards east. The rivers originated in western gods like Godavari, Krishna, Mahanadi etc. flow towards east and merge into the Bay of Bengal. Western gods acted as a western boundary and eastern gods acted as a eastern boundary. The southernmost tip of plateau is Kanyakumari. 
the peninsular plateau as two broad divisions that is central islands dakkan plateau north part of the narmada river is called central islands central islands are divided into malwa plateau chota nagapur plateau comparison to the gangetic plain malwa plateau region is dry in this plateau rivers are not perennial that's why the irrigation for the second crop depends on the tube wells and tanks perennial river means a river flowing throughout the year they never dry up chota nagapur plateau is rich in mineral resources hence it is called ruur of india south part of the narmada river is called dakkan plateau dakkan plateau is a triangular landmass while satpura range forms the dakkan plateau's northern edge mahadev kaimur and maikal ranges are in the eastern edges western ghats act as a western boundary eastern ghats act as a eastern boundary nilgiris form a southern boundary when we come to the western ghats the western ghats lie parallel to the west coast the western ghats extended for 1600 kilometers the structure of the western ghats is continuous with few passes these are higher than eastern ghats western ghats includes the palani annamalai hills and kadamam hills anaimudi is the highest peak in south india and is located in annamalai hills its height is 2695 meters the western ghats join the nilgiris near gudaluru nilgiris is over a height of about 2000 meters the famous hill station udaga mandalam popularly known as uti is located in nilgiris dodabetta is the highest peak in nilgiris its height is 2637 meters now we come to the eastern ghats the eastern ghats extended from mahanadi valley in the north to nilgiris in the south eastern ghats are not continuous ranges eastern ghats are shorter than western ghats rivers that originate the western ghats like godavari krishna cut across the eastern ghats and join the bay of bengal the average height of the eastern ghats is 900 meters the highest peak in eastern ghats is aroma konda found at chintapalli in andhra pradesh nallamalas velikondas palakondas and sheshachalas are some of the hilly tracks of eastern ghats one of the remarkable features of the peninsular plateau is block soil which is formed due to volcanic activity now let us learn about the thar desert the thar desert is the seventh largest desert in the world the thar desert is the largest desert in the indian subcontinent it is located in leeward side of aravalli hills it occupies much of western rajasthan it receives the little rainfall ranging from 100 to 150 mm per year it consists of sandy plains and rocky outcrops it has arid climate with low vegetation luni is the only river in thar desert indira gandhi canal was dug from bakranangal dam for irrigation in thar desert it is the longest canal in india about 650 kilometers now let us learn about the coastal plains the southern part of the peninsular plateau is bordered by narrow coastal strips along the arabian sea in the west and bay of bengal in the east western coast starts from ran of kutch and ends at kanyakumari it is narrower than east coast it is divided into three parts konkan coast touches maharashtra and goa states kenara coast touches karnataka states malabar coast touches kerala state when we come to east coast 
ఈస్ట్ కోస్ట్ స్ట్రెచెస్ ఫ్రమ్ మహానది ఇన్ ఒడిషా టు కావేరీ డెల్టా ఇన్ తమిళనాడు దీస్ ప్లెయిన్స్ ఆర్ ఫార్మ్డ్ బై ద రివర్స్ మహానది గోదావరి కృష్ణ అండ్ కావేరీ ఈస్ట్ కోస్టల్ ప్లెయిన్స్ ఆర్ వైడ్ హ్యావ్ లార్జ్ సర్ఫేస్ స్ట్రక్చర్ అండ్ వెరీ ఫర్టైల్ దీస్ కోస్టల్ ప్లెయిన్స్ హ్యావ్ డిఫరెంట్ లోకల్ నేమ్స్ లైక్ ఉత్కల్ కోస్ట్ ఇన్ ఒడిషా సర్కార్ కోస్ట్ ఇన్ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ కోరమండల్ కోస్ట్ ఇన్ తమిళనాడు లైక్ ద ఇండో గ్యాంగ్టిక్ ప్లెయిన్ దీస్ డెల్టాస్ ఆర్ ఆల్సో అగ్రికల్చరలీ డెవలప్డ్ దీస్ కోస్టల్ జోన్స్ ఆల్సో రిచ్ ఇన్ ఫిషింగ్ రిసోర్సెస్ లేక్స్ లైక్ చిల్కా కొల్లేరు అండ్ పులికాట్ ఆర్ అదర్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఫీచర్స్ ఆఫ్ ద కోస్టల్ ప్లెయిన్ లెటర్స్ నో లెర్న్ అబౌట్ అనదర్ మేజర్ రిలీఫ్ ఫీచర్ ద ఐలాండ్స్ జనరల్లీ ఐలాండ్ ఈస్ డిఫైన్ యాజ్ ఎ పీస్ ఆఫ్ ల్యాండ్ సరౌండెడ్ బై వాటర్ ఫోర్ సైడ్స్ అండమాన్ అండ్ నికోబార్ ఐలాండ్స్ ఆర్ లొకేటెడ్ ఇన్ బే ఆఫ్ బెంగాల్ అండ్ లక్షద్వీప్ ఐలాండ్స్ ఆర్ ఇన్ అరేబియన్ సీ అండమాన్ అండ్ నికోబార్ ఐలాండ్స్ ఆర్ ఎలివేటెడ్ పోర్షన్ ఆఫ్ సబ్మెర్జ్డ్ మౌంటైన్ పార్ట్స్ రన్నింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ మయన్మార్ మౌంటైన్ అండ్ ఆర్కన్ యోమా ఇన్ అండమాన్ అండ్ నికోబార్ ఐలాండ్స్ నార్కొండం అండ్ బ్యారెన్ ఐలాండ్స్ ఆర్ వాల్కానిక్ ఆర్జిన్ ఇందిరా పాయింట్ ఈజ్ ద సదరన్ మోస్ట్ టిప్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా అండ్ ఈజ్ లొకేటెడ్ ఇన్ నికోబార్ ఐలాండ్స్ ఇట్ వాస్ సబ్మెర్జ్డ్ ఇన్ టూ థౌజండ్ ఫోర్ సునామీ లక్షద్వీప్ ఐలాండ్స్ ఆర్ కోరల్ ఆర్జిన్ ఇట్స్ టోటల్ జాగ్రఫికల్ ఏరియా ఈజ్ థర్టీ టూ స్క్వైర్ కిలోమీటర్స్ దిస్ ఐలాండ్స్ ఆర్ ఫేమస్ ఫర్ గ్రేట్ వెరైటీ ఆఫ్ ఫ్లోరా అండ్ ఫనా ఫ్లోరా అండ్ ఫనా మీన్స్ ఎ వెరైటీ ఆఫ్ ప్లాంట్స్ అండ్ అనిమల్స్ there is a vast diversity in the landforms of india some areas are irrigated by perennial rivers and some by rain fed rivers many places are located in river valleys and other in the mountains these are the indian relief features thank you